And welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Let's uh, move uh, back in history. I'm going back to the year 1981 to talk about a guy called Adam, actually a little boy called Adam Walsh, uh, who, of course, um, it's a pretty similar story to some of the things that we hear here in Nigeria, where kids go to the mall with their moms or with their parents and, you know, disappear. Um, it was on this day that, you know, Adam Walsh was found dead. Um, his decapitated body apparently was found. It was an American boy who was abducted from a Sears department store in the Hollywood Mall in Florida. On the 27th of July, 1981, his head was found on this day in, uh, along the Florida uh, Turnpike, almost 130 miles from Hollywood. Um, the, of course, investigation you know, that was carried out showed uh, pretty not very much, you know, except a guy called uh, Otis Toole, who was a serial killer, who confessed to killing Adam Walsh. Um, unfortunately, also for the story, there was no proper evidence. They lost some of the vital pieces of evidence that they should have used to find um, Otis Toole guilty. And eventually he was able to recant his testimony, um, even if he eventually died in prison in 2006. Uh, but, you know, this was a very, very painful investigation. About $100,000 was given out as a reward to find this little boy who, um, you know, went missing. Um, eventually, when his body was found, uh, the police was able to drop a narrative was uh, what may have happened, you know, and of course, uh, shared, you know, the, uh, the investigation to show that Otis Tu uh, most likely abducted the little boy and took him for a ride where he killed him in his car, strangulated him with his uh, seatbelt and, you know, cut his head off with a, with a cutlass. The blood uh, traces from the car, you know, they didn't um, ha hold, hold any water because they had lost, the police had lost a towel and lost, uh, you know, cutlass also that Otis still allegedly used in killing the boy. And so there wasn't actually any, you know, 100% proof on who killed um, the little boy um, or who would be found guilty. Otis Tool was able to recount his, uh, or recount rather his uh, testimony, or take back his testimony, uh, confessing to the crime, and you know eventually wasn't found guilty. Oh, but man. it was on this day that Adam Walsh, um, or his body rather, was found uh, dead. Or was found rather his head actually, not just his, his body was never found, too, just too his head. Too sad, too sad, too sad. But the great thing is that this was adapted into a movie, and yeah. people, you know, about 38 million people worldwide were able to watch and probably learn it, learn it, you know, too about, you know, just this interesting situation. How do you abduct a boy? You kill him, and then, man. But I think it's also, you know, to make people more aware of how careful you should be when you're in public with your kids. Um, you should never let them out of your sight. I've seen a video last week where someone had a little rubber, you know, spiral chain, you know, not a chain, but, you know, some rope that they you know, put on their child while they were in the mall, you know, just so they're sure that the, that child never walks out of their sight. Because children can be like that. Um, just disappear in three seconds and you have no idea where they are. Um, they're probably just blown away or carried away with something shiny that they saw and that's how they go. According to the story, he um, convinced the boy to get into his car, promising him candy and sweets and, and some cake and some of all of that. And that's, you know, was, that was the end. So it's a reminder really that the public is not safe, you know, regardless of what city you live in, in the United States, in the UK, wherever. Um, and here in Nigeria too, the, you know, the, there's nowhere that's actually too safe because there's people, there's pedophiles out there. There's, in Nigeria, ritualists. Uh, there is murderers out there looking for victims. And so you should always be very, very cautious, you know, of what your kids are doing and where they are at every single time. Mm. And um, for today, history, I'm going back to the year 2003. This year was one of the hottest summers in the history of Europe since about the 1504 thereabout, you know. It was so hot in Europe at that time that today in history, August 10, um, recorded one of the hottest, you know, days in the, um, in the UK. And um, the UK recorded its first ever temperature of over 100 degrees Fahrenheit for the first time. Now, throughout the month of August, there was an intense heat wave that claimed over 35,000 lives. I mean, this heat wave was so bad that, you know, it basically caused fires and it was just so terrible. People, people fell ill, people, people passed on. France was one of the worst hit. About 15,000 people died in France due to the heat wave. In Germany, about 7,000 people died. A majority of the victims were people who were elderly, people who were very young or people who were chronically ill. And 
this heat wave also caused melting of the glaciers. It caused, you know, avalanches. It caused flash floods. It just came with lots of environmental distress. And we know that, you know, when the environmentalists and scientists come in with all the ex explanations be beyond the surface, they begin to tell you how this is basically caused by global warming and how we can and how we need to take action. Um, to prevent climate change. Yeah, you know, and you know, progressive every year uh, since then has you know been a record to be the hottest year ever, hottest year ever. Uh, I'm not sure what the records will be for 2021 uh, because it, it's been pr pretty cool, you know, for the for the most of the year. But um, I'm sure that as time passes, right now we're talking about or we haven't shared um, about that. But if you look at uh, international news organizations, you see the wildfires in Turkey are burning out of control. It's, it's, I don't remember if there have been wildfires at this time of the year before. It normally happens sometime at the end of the year, you know, in, in um, Australia and California, some of those places. But in Turkey, it is, it is burning out of control. And, you know, large parts of the country um, are being, you know, being burnt. Um, so it really, you know, it just tells about global warming and how, you know, we maybe should start taking it more seriously. Um, unfortunately, we have to do a hunger first before we start, you know, thinking of um, some other things that we must do. But um, that's where it's, it's starting from. So that's it for you today in history 2003, one of the hottest you know, temperatures in Europe and in fact a terrible heat wave in the UK. All right, and of course in 1981, the, uh, well, Adam Walsh, the death of Adam Walsh on this day, his uh, severed head was discovered um, in the United States. And that was of course the end of you know, his, uh, his uh, story. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we're moving into our first major conversation for today. We're talking about the PDP and Uche Sekunda's refusing to resign. Six National Working Committee members have asked that he resigns. What do you think would happen next? Or what you know, can we analyze from all of this? We're going to be speaking with our guest after the short break. Stay with us.